Dear friends, uh, as you are all aware that uh, we had an unfortunate incident where uh, we have a positive uh, case of COVID-19 in our state of Meghalaya in Shillong city. Friends, uh, we are still going into the investigation of this case. But uh, on the preliminary investigation that is there, the information that is coming to us is that one of the relatives of the concerned person had a travel history to one of the infected countries and was back in Shillong before the 14 day quarantine period was over. And though the person continued to inform 108 and registered himself and took all the precautions. Sometimes what they call in medical terms, there are asymptomatic cases also, which do not show any symptom, but you could be a carrier. So therefore, there is a high chance that it could have been passed on from there. But of course, these are only preliminary information that we're getting. We're looking at all the different possibilities on how this could have happened. Maybe it could have happened during a different travel time or was there a possibility of it coming from maybe another patient. Our areas which are yet to be known but investigation is going on. But one thing we have come to understand and learn from this is that sticking to social distancing and ensuring that isolation and the quarantines are adhered to strictly is very very important and I can't stress on that importance at this point in time. Having said that friends, COVID-19 does not know any race or any color or any religion or doesn't even know boundaries. So therefore I think stigmatizing individuals because they've tested positive, I think is a very, very wrong thing. It could happen to anyone. And as a society, I think we must be mature and responsible in how we handle with this situation. Stigmatizing and coming out with negative comments is not going to help in this situation. And as a responsible society, we must work together to find a way forward on how we will ensure that we break the transmission chain of this COVID-19. At the same time, there has been stigmatization of the people who are working in that particular institution or the hospital. This again is very wrong. I sincerely urge the people of the localities, I sincerely urge the Rangbash Nongs and the elders in the society and the religious leaders in the society that this is the time when we must come together. These people who were working in those institutions, it's not their fault. And I don't think as a society, our actions should be in any way negative or look in any way as if you're blaming them. We should support them. But that does not mean that we should be careless in our ways. We need to be careful, but we can ensure that we protect ourselves and be careful. And at the same time, as I said, act responsibly and be sensitive to these people who are going through a difficult time. I urge the people of Shillong and the citizens of Meghalaya that this is a time that our true color of our society should come out, which should be a society which understands these situations and works together to resolve the problems that we're facing. I also want to reach out to our medical doctors. I know this is a very difficult time for you. Not just the medical doctors, but even all the medical professionals, like the nurses, the staff that is there. You're working very hard. And I know that you're putting a lot at risk. But I would like to urge you and remind you of the oath that you've taken when you had finished your education. 
is to serve society and to serve the poor and to serve the people who are facing health problems. And this is the time that you will need to act. I know that you are facing a lot of challenges and difficulties, but I think as doctors, you are most aware on how the precautions can be taken, how hygiene and being careful can ensure that you are protected. Any kind of equipment, any kind of protection gear will not be protective if you yourself are not careful. Therefore, yes, government is having challenges. The country is having challenges when it comes to different kind of materials and uh, medical equipments that need to be given. But we are working on them. But in the meantime, our work must go on. In the meantime, we must serve the people who are coming to the hospitals and to different institutions. Therefore, I urge the doctors, you as leaders in your field, you need to motivate your juniors, you need to motivate your staff, you need to remind them about the work that they're doing for humanity and act responsibly in these times that are very difficult. Friends, I can also not stress less on the importance of testing. We are really having a challenge at this point in time, which I can assure you that our team has been working very hard and is up to the challenge. We are doing many tests. We have quarantined the institution. We have uh, contact traced all the primary and the secondary contacts. And we are in the process of ensuring that more and more tests will take place. All tests cannot take place at the same time. Therefore, we will start with the primary contacts and then go into the secondary contacts. We estimate that there could be around 200 plus primary contacts that are there and already 50% of them have been sent, the samples have been sent for testing, the results of which should be coming out very soon. Friends, at this point in time, I would also like to stress on something that is very, very basic. Fear versus being careful. I was speaking to somebody who called me on my mobile phone the other day. And he asked me, he said that I had uh, seen a person who was coughing, you know, and uh, had symptoms. If it was positive or not, I don't know. But I saw that person then travel in a vehicle and that vehicle crossed me. Will I be infected? Friends, I think this fear needs to go out. We need to understand that yes, this is a serious problem. We need to understand that we need to take care of ourselves. But there is no need to fear. We need to ensure that we clarify everything to the people. The fear will be there when people are unaware of what's really in front of us. The coronavirus, which is the COVID-19 virus, is a flu. And 85% of the people who get this flu are either asymptomatic, which means they show no symptoms, or are people who will have very, very light symptoms like light fever, flu, or a cough, and won't even realize it. And most probably after 14 days in most cases, and in some cases after 20 days, 21 days, these symptoms and the flu is gone. So 85% will be facing this kind of a problem. There are only about 10 to 15% cases where you might see individuals who might need some medical attention. You might have five to three to five percent cases which might have uh, require ventilation. But in general, most of the cases, anything between 85 to 95 percent of the cases are cases which are not critical. So therefore, we must not fear it. I urge all of you to be careful. The word here is to take care of yourself. And that we can do by always following the social norms that the government of India and government of Meghalaya has been stressing on. Maintain social distance. Avoid social gatherings. Ensure that your hands are always clean by washing them. Avoid rubbing your eyes or rubbing your nose or touching your mouth or your face. So these basic steps, if they are taken, I think the care is taken out there. 
So I think this stigma and this entire fear that just by looking at somebody from a distance of even 20 meters, I may get coronavirus. I think this fear must go away. The other day, some people were asking me that I met a person whose brother or sister met that friend whose another brother or sister was studying in London. Will I be infected by the virus? So I think these kind of misconceptions need to go. Yes, as I said, this is a serious issue. We need to take care, but we need not fear. If we are careful, I think we'll be able to overcome the situation. So friends, I can only say stay safe, stay at home and follow the social norms. Yesterday we had a cabinet meeting where we had taken some decisions in light of the lockdown period that is going to come ahead. And at that time, this particular case was not there in front of us. But in the light of this case that has come in front, where one person is tested positive, the cabinet today met again and we have decided to go back to the old system that we had started. Therefore, all the decisions that were made by the cabinet yesterday stand nullified as of now. We will not have any intra-district movement. We will not have any inter-district movement. We will not have any social gatherings. We will not have the schools uh, open. At the same time, public as well as pu pu private transport will be restricted throughout the state. So therefore, friends, this is being done again in the interest of the people to ensure that we can overcome this situation. At the end, I would like to assure all the citizens of our state that please take care of yourself. And I want to assure you that you need not worry. The government and the health department and the administration is very much in control of the situation. As I said, in the last 18 hours, we have identified more than 2000 people. We have quarantined and closed the institutions and the branches. We've ensured that all the primary contacts have been contacted. We have isolated them and 50% of them have already been tested. The samples have been sent. So therefore, the administration has moved very swiftly and we assure you that government will take every step to ensure that every citizen of our state is protected. With these few words, once again, thank you so much for always supporting and always being with the government in its decision. I know these are very difficult times, but we need the support of the society. We need your support. We need the support of the elders, the headmen, the religious leaders. It is only if we all come together and fight together, it's only then can we overcome this situation. May God bless each and every one of us. Thank you so much.